What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new NanoPi M4 from Friendly Elect. You might also know them as Friendly Arm. So this is a pretty beefy little single board computer here. It's powered by a 6 core rock chip RK3399. Now the version I have here is the 2 gigabyte model. They also offer a 4 gigabyte model. They both run DDR3 RAM and the price on these differs a little bit. The base price on the 2 gigabyte model is $65. If we were to go with the 4 gigabyte model, base price is $95. The package that I received also included the heatsink and the 16 gigabyte eMMC module, so it's around $84. Plus, you'll have to factor in shipping, and it's around $15 if you're in the US. Straight out of the box, the NanoPi M4 is the exact same size as the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B. You might notice that the M4 actually has four USB 3.0 ports. And if we look over here on the side, the M4 actually uses a USB Type-C for power. It also works as OTG. Like I mentioned, I also have the heatsink and the eMMC module for the M4. It does come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas in the box. And as you can see, this heatsink is massive. So the M4 was the same size as the Raspberry Pi until we add this heatsink. We're going to pretty much double the height on this thing. But I'm telling you, having a good heat sink on this RK3399 is a must. I ran some benchmarks, and with the heat sink, I doubled those benchmarks because we were able to keep that CPU cool enough so it doesn't throttle. Friendly Elect recommends 5 volt 4 amps, so I'm using a 1 plus charger here with a USB Type-C cable. It's 5 volt 4 amps, and it works fine on the Nano Pi. So you probably know by the title of this video that we're going to be running Android on here. This is part one. The next video I do on the M4, I will be running Linux. There's a few distros that I've been testing out. I'm trying to find the best one right now, and I want to get some bugs worked out before I show you guys how it performs. But before I move on to Android, I do want to go over the specs real quick. There's a lot to cover here. I'm going to skip over some things. I will leave a link in the description to their website because this thing is jam packed full of goodies. All right, first up, GPIO. We have two sets here, 40 pin, just like the Raspberry Pi, and an extra 24 pin GPIO set that supports up to PCIe X2. Being that it's X2, you could theoretically run ethernet from here, Wi-Fi, add extra USBs, 3.0 or 3.1, or you could even add a SATA connection. I will be looking into this a little more, and if I ever get anything working, I will make a video on it. Moving on to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it's a single module. We have dual antennas. The antennas are included when you buy one of the boards. 2.4, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 4.1. I've been powering the M4 from the USB Type-C port here, but you could power it from the GPIO if you'd like and use this strictly for OTG. You cannot get a video signal out of the USB Type-C port. I have tested it and tested it trying to get it to work. The board also has a full-size HDMI 2.0A port. It will support 4K at 60 Hz. An eMMC socket. Now this is important for running Android. As of making this video, you can only run Android from an eMMC module. If you want to run Linux, you can use an SD card. Also has a 3.5mm audio jack, gigabit Ethernet, 4 USB 3.0 ports. And for the RAM, we have dual channel. 2 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte, depending on the model, it's DDR3 1866 megahertz RAM. And finally, if we flip the board over, we have a micro SD card slot. I have tested a 128 gigabyte card with Linux and it works fine. And all of this is powered by a Rockchip RK3399. Now this is a 6 core CPU, 2 Cortex A72s running at up to 1.4 gigahertz, and there's also 4 Cortex A53 cores that run up to 1.8 gigahertz. Now you will see everywhere that the four A53s run at two gigahertz. While it might be possible, I have not found a kernel for Android or Linux that allows this yet. Hopefully in the future it could, but at 1.8 gigahertz, this 3399 already gets really hot. The GPU is a Mali T864 four core GPU. It does 4K VP9 and 4K 10 bits H256, H264 at 60 FPS. And in order for all of this decoding to work, it needs to be implemented into whatever operating system you're running. And luckily, Friendly Elect does have this pre-programmed in their Linux build. Full video hardware acceleration. All right, a couple things to note here. I am on the Nougat build that they offer. They also have an Oreo build, Android 8.1. 
Problem is, they don't have the Google Play Store and I've tried everything to get it installed. I know I could sideload stuff, but it's just so much easier to download everything I've already purchased. I was able to run an Intuitu benchmark in Android 8 and 7. The difference wasn't much at all. We didn't gain much from being on Android 8.1. Just going to take a look at Ida64. Nano PC T4. This is actually the M4. I also own the T4. I guess they're using the same build here. We have the 6 core RK3399 along with the Mali T860 4 core GPU. OpenGL 3.2. Unfortunately, Rockchip stated that Vulkan would be supported with the RK3399, but they just announced the RK3399 Pro which comes with Vulkan support out of the box, so I don't think they're going to be adding it to the older 3399. The whole interface feels really snappy, so let's go ahead and move over to some benchmarks. Now, I ran the same benchmarks on my Asus Tinker board running Android 7.1.2 and my Nvidia Shield Android TV. I figured we're close enough in the price range with all three of these devices to kind of compare them. I didn't want to compare any of these with $500 to $1,000 phones, so this is what we got here. First up, 3D Mark iStorm Unlimited, the Nano Pi M4, 11,585. We definitely beat out the Asus Tinkerboard, but the Nvidia Shield is way ahead of us. Keep in mind that the Shield TV is $200 on Amazon, but they always run deals for 150, 160. Slingshot scores were pretty much dead on with the Asus Tinkerboard, but the Shield once again destroyed us all. Unfortunately, the Tinkerboard kept crashing when I tried to run the T-Rex Benchmark and GFX Bench. Geekbench 4 single core scores were really close to the Nvidia Shield, but both of these definitely beat out that Tinkerboard. For the multi-core score, I was actually really impressed that the M4 scored this high. Now, I've tested a couple other 3399 boards, and they've scored a lot lower than this. It's not super high-end, but it's really good for a single board computer. So a lot of people are going to want a game on this. I figured I'd test out a few games. First up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. I want to do a dynamite test here. I just threw a bunch of random TNT blocks down, and we're going to see if we can crash this game. I do have the chunk distance set at 10, and I notice a big difference if I go to 14. It's really laggy, and even once in a while, when you're making these 360s, you can feel the lag with this GPU. Next up, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now, I notice a lot of glitching going on, and I have seen this with some of the lower-end Mali GPUs. You'll get some black bars coming in and out. This is totally maxed out in the settings, and I notice it's definitely not at full speed. And you'll see those artifacts. There we go. It comes and goes, and it's more noticeable when you're on very high settings. So I'm going to go ahead, take it down a little bit. We're just going to go to high, resolution scale at 80%. I'm just going to turn everything down a notch and see how it performs here. I can really tell that the frame rate has significantly improved, and I was pretty sure we'd be able to at least run this on high settings. Unfortunately, we cannot go to that 100% scaling resolution. Here's Asphalt 9, normal settings. Now, I was having issues with my Xbox controller here. I was using the Xbox One S controller. It detected it, but for some reason I couldn't hit my Nitro. And the controller worked fine in every other game I tested. I was using it in San Andreas and Minecraft. I didn't have any issues there, so it's probably the game and not the board. But overall, it seems to perform well at normal settings. You know we gotta see how this thing handles emulators. I did test God of War Chains of Olympus and it runs really bad. We're at 30 FPS on the lowest settings, so we're gonna test some other games out. Here's Wipeout Pure. Now this is another one of those games. I'm on the lowest settings. FPS is listed in the top right hand corner. I'm at 1x resolution. We're not going to be able to play this game at full speed. But there are games that work really well. This is Ridge Racer. I'm at 2x resolution. It looks good. Plays fine. FPS is up in the top right hand corner. We're running at a steady 60. Didn't have any trouble playing this game.
And finally, Tekken Dark Resurrection, 3x resolution, 60 FPS, feels great, looks good. So yeah, it does handle some PSP games really well, others it's just going to struggle with. So God of War, Killzone, Midnight Club, there's a few others that are definitely out of the question. And finally, for emulation tests, I wanted to run some N64, so I'm using MuPin64 FZ from the Play Store. This actually surprised me. We're at a steady 30 FPS. It's at the very top of the screen. So I figured I'd try to up the resolution a little bit. The footage you just saw was at 480 by 360. We're gonna go to 960 by 720. And it runs it perfectly. And it just looks so much better with this higher resolution. Now I know Wave Race is an easier game to emulate using Lupin 64, so I wanted to move on to something else. But I have tested tons and tons of devices. If it runs 007, you're also going to be able to play all the Zelda games, all the Mario games, minus Mario Party because there's a lot of glitches there. But there are literally hundreds of N64 games that are going to run full speed on this board at a higher resolution. Even Smash will run at full speed. We're still at that 960 by 720 resolution, and it's running this really good. Now, we're not going to get a constant FPS. There's always been trouble with 007, but the performance here is really great. Overall, the NanoPi M4 is a nice little single board computer. Now, I really wish that Rockchip would get their stuff together. This chip has been out for a little while. I tested it when it initially launched in an Android TV box, and I was hoping performance would increase significantly up until now. But unfortunately, little leadway has been made, at least in the Android department. Now, Linux could be a whole different story. I'm going to be making a few videos on a couple different distributions for this board. And if you guys have any requests, let me know in the comments below. So if you head over to the Friendly Arm page, you might have seen another little single board computer that was just released. And I do have one on hand that I want to do some testing on. So this is the Neo 4. It's pretty much the same thing as the M4, except it has one gigabyte of RAM, still has that RK3399 with a much smaller footprint. And a quick comparison between the Neo 4 and a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, as you can see, the Neo 4, even with that heatsink on, is a super tiny single board computer. So keep an eye out on the channel if you want to see some videos on that. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. You might as well turn notifications on if you're interested in seeing more single board computer videos like this. And like always, thanks for watching.